With any of our databases, it's important to be aware of what the search engine is really doing with the words you give it, and to be very alert for unsatisfactory results. For example, in EBSCO's Academic Search Premier database, if I'm looking for articles about the effects of climate change on marine life, this search, Climate Change Marine Life, would be a reasonable start in Google, but it's going to cause trouble in Academic Search Premier. Well, it just searched thousands of magazines and journals for at least a few decades each, and it only found seven articles. It's very important to recognize that that is not a reasonable result. There should be much more on this topic. What's happening is that the EBSCO search engine, unlike Google, is looking for articles with all of your terms close together somewhere in the order you gave them. So the key is that for best results with this search engine, you'll want to separate your main ideas and put each on a separate line. Now I'm searching for articles that are about climate change and also about marine life, but don't necessarily have all of those words right together. And that's better, I've got 86 items now, but I haven't really made Academic Search Premier cough up the goods yet, and here's why. And now heads up, because this is probably the most important trick to making sure you're getting all the best articles that this database has for your project. Each article has subject headings assigned to it. And on the left here, under the subject thesaurus terms, it shows the subjects that came up most often in your whole result set. And there are some more tucked away under this link. Now if you're alert for their terms, you'll usually get better results. Notice, for example, that I asked for climate change, but the database is using climatic changes, and it also uses global warming for that idea. So I'll include their terms in my search. And while we're here, it might be tempting to click on the terms that they're offering. What that would do is it would add that into your search as an AND. So that would be telling the database to find articles that have all the terms you've already given it and also that other term. But I don't want the article to have both climate change and climatic changes. Either is fine. Similarly, I asked for marine life, but the database is using the term marine biology and the term marine ecology, so I'll add those into my search. And now I have 961 articles. That's more reasonable for the number of articles that are in this database. And don't worry about having too many. At this point, you want to collect up all the relevant articles that that database has. We'll trim them down to the very best ones later, but that's a different video. Right now, we'll take a look at one more example to illustrate a few more tips for working with EBSCO search engine. If I'm looking for compulsive gambling and treatment, the subject headings show compulsive gamblers along with compulsive gambling. So I want to add that to my search. But this database offers a nice shortcut called truncation. To truncate is to chop off. I can truncate the word gambling after the L and put an asterisk there, and the asterisk now stands for any additional letters. So this will get either compulsive gambling or compulsive gamblers. Similarly, if I'm interested in treatment, I'd probably also want an article if it used the word therapy. And again, I can truncate therapy, and that will get therapy, therapies, and therapeutic. Now here's an important trap to watch out for. Notice that there's an OR out here in this pull-down menu. Don't use it! Really, they shouldn't even offer it there. It just makes trouble. And here's why. If I use that OR to include therapy in my search, I get over 404,000 articles. And that's ridiculous. And that's because what I've told the search engine to do here is to look for articles that are either about both compulsive gambling and treatment, or are about therapy. That could be any kind of therapy, whether or not it has anything to do with gambling. So, ORs are important and useful, but use them within a line to include different terms that authors might be using to get at the same idea. And now that we've done a good search by watching for the subject terms and including them with ANDs, ORs, and truncation, the next video will go over useful ways to limit your results to the very best articles for your project.